How you doing YouTube? Matt Nassa Beer Reviews, back with a little bit of a uh, aged beer in the form of the brewery. It is their Jardiner. I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, this be a Belgian style pale ale. Um, a bright and floral, uh, flavorful, sorry, table beer with assertive hop character. Uh, 4.9%. On the back, it actually says, our dinner, the Jardiner, which is uh, French for gardener, um, was inspired by fresh, sessionable beers of the Belgian dinner table. Perfect beer for any occasion, casual or neat. Jardiner uh, is best enjoyed fresh. The ideal serving temperature is 45 degrees. Best served in a tulip or wine glass. Um, you're not going to be able to make it out back there, but on the back of this beer, it says it was bottled in October of 2015. So this is the end of March 2021. Uh, so five and a half years on this. They said it's better off served fresh. Ooh, this one's gonna gush. Um, not in a bad way though, because these Belgian table beers can do that. Just kind of be a little bit of champagne-y, a little bit aggressive um, out of the bottle. Uh, I like time on my low ABV Belgian beers. I know this is a little more of a hop forward offering, but I'm kind of curious to see how this aged. I bought this super local to me. Um, there's this little kind of weird, it's not even a beer store. It's like a mom and pop supermarket, like, like mom and pop. Like, I don't know a lot. Of, I don't even know if a lot of people have been in a supermarket like this, like or, or, or grocery store or corner store. Super tiny. Like you walking through the place, you could barely, your shoulders are touching product. Everything is jammed to the max. And they basically have a cooler in the back for drinks, but it's a huge expansive cooler. So you're allowed to actually walk into the cooler and look at beers. And there's just hillocks of weird beer everywhere. I went in there and I reviewed a, I found a, a five-year-old barley wine. I think it was five or six or seven years old barley wine to lower the boom that I did probably uh, late last year, 2020, I believe it was. I found that there and I decided to go back today. Um, and I found this, which I never saw there before. They did some reorganizing. So this jumped out of nowhere. And then I picked up some, um, what is it third coast barley wine from bells that was almost three years old so yeah we'll see how this plays anyway i mean it looks like a belgian pale uh maybe a little bit darker in color kind of getting a little soft kind of caramel vibes to it with that age over time but i mean the head is white it's white to be super fluffy creamy exactly what you'd expect from a belgian pale just maybe a little bit darker but as far as that haze go og hazy right here let's get a nose let me tell you what that smells really, really beautifully citrus. I don't know if it's it's a remainder of that hop. You're talking about a sub 5% pale ale. I don't think so. I think it's actually a combination maybe of just a tick of those hops being left in a, uh, and a yeast combination. There's no tart, sour funkiness to this beer. There's no kind of sideways in it. Soft, 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 light paper oxidation with this little waft of a soft drinkable kind of caramel. It actually smells pretty damn good to be perfectly honest with you. I'm just gonna dive right in. Cheers. Oh, that's delicious. Absolutely delicious. And I mean that in a very, like it's still, I don't want, I don't want to say it's still on its peak upswing of the beer it was probably a markedly different beer when it was fresh but i'd be hard pressed to believe this beer was that much better when it was um made to the point where it'd be like oh, okay a bit different of a beer now but not better of a beer right now it is really nice it has this nice zesty spiciness with a little bit of kind of this pepper that marries well with this nice dry finish that bright citrusy almost lemon likeness in a nose gives way to almost like a flambéed kind of orange kind of vibe like if you ever cooked with orange juice it has that kind of not savory but you've burned off some of that sweetness um but still have that zestiness and that little bit of a uh, kind of citrusness to it towards a little bit more i guess for the lack of a better term mature kind of citrus the bittering still there uh from the hops i don't think it's showing a ton of fruitiness outside of that that big helping of that citrus lemon thing that I think is just the hops are propping up the yeast portion of the show there, but it has a nice bittering pop to it. Drink super smooth, super crisp while soft at the same time. It has this crispy kind of finish to it. Reverse that. A soft kind of uh, start to it and it's crispy kind of finish. 
This is delicious. I mean, you're talking about, I think I paid $9 for this bottle. So you're talking about $9 at $7.50 of a Belgian style pale ale, five years old. I would be hard pressed to find a better five year old, you know, it's almost six year old, five and a half year old Belgian style pale ale. I've had a bunch of them. I enjoy them quite a bit. I like time on my Belgian pails. Almost by default. I don't know if I've been trained to like them with age on them because you have to understand when I got into Belgian beers right around like the late 90s, um, early 2000s, like the freshest Belgian ale, regardless of style you're going to get, was at least a year old. Um, the logistics of getting beer from overseas over to here and distributed to different locations in the United States was a bit slower of a process back then. So you never got relatively hyper fresh beers. Um, I like to think of them quite a bit like Orval in a sense that if they're done right and they're done in a nice way, this doesn't say anything about Brett in it, but it almost has that slight little Brett characteristic going on with it, um, that it has that kind of those legs um, to stand on with that time kind of helping it along in a very pretty way. It's a very delicious beer from a brewery that does very delicious uh, beers, you know, um, just tasty stuff. Absolutely tasty. Glad I picked it up. Let's put it away. Only one bottle there, though, as far as I can see. I'm gonna go ahead back in that place and hunt. It's it's like, it's like finding like a, a like a, a sunken treasure ship or something like that. This place. It's crazy the way. There's no rhyme or reason or organization. I found this bottle. There was a box of like, Coors Extra Gold, and then a case of Schlitz or something, and I just put, moved the boxes, and this is just wedged in between them towards the back. And then there's the, the 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 third coast I found like in the back corner of a shelf behind like some Modelo. Like there's no rhyme or reason in this place. It's it's crazy, and uh, I like going there. Let's put it that way. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. Aged beautifully. Give me that citrus hop character. Really nice soft initial mouthfeel. Finishes clean. Finishes dry. Makes you want to go back with a little bit more. There's a little pop of sweetness that helps balance off that bittering and that dryness. Absolutely fantastic beer. Is it one of the better Belgian pails that I've had as of late? Actually, it's one of the better ones I've ever had, to be perfectly honest with you. That could be a little bit of uh, bias because I've been really, really, really wanting a really well done Belgian pale ale lately. And the last three that I've had, three, uh, that I've had have let me down immensely. There are basically banana beers as far as the yeast phenolics came off and just a little bit too much in one direction. Um, one of the reasons why I picked this up and two, I was just like, you know, brewery kind of crushes this style. And, and, uh, while I haven't had a ton of this stuff by, by those guys, they've been very good. And this is exactly what I've been hunting for. So I'm a little bit kind of that, that, uh, plain saltine on desert Island thing, treating it like it's Ritz. Eddie Murphy references from the 70s and 80s. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Mount Rushmore says. Value to availability, like I said, nine bucks, 750, six years old, sold. Leave you with if you like what we like this. If you like Belgian Pale Elves, done and done. Classically made. I would hope if I drank this beer blind, I would say this is a Belgian Pale Ale. I would hope from over there. And that's what I'm trying to hit home is that it doesn't come off as an American brewery making a Belgian style beer. It tastes all the bits and pieces of something made over there. And for me, at least, that's probably the best compliment I can get in one of these beers by an American brewery, at least. So there you go. Review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, Beer Massive. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of brewery right now. Hope we'll see you next time. Cheers.